to run some boost from this AMR 500. Does the motor even run? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. I got something new for you today. I'm introducing a brand new project vehicle. It is a 1994 Geo Metro XFI. That's right. I'm originally a Sprint Turbo owner, and now I have a Metro XFI, which I have always wanted. And the only reason I bought this piece of junk vehicle, and you'll see what I'm talking about, is because I had this sitting in my garage. It is an AMR positive displacement supercharger. You can see up on the channel, I have a test where we flow tested this to find out how much power it would support. But because I had a supercharger sitting in my garage, naturally I needed a vehicle to test it on. So I got this Metro XFI. And because this Metro was originally a delivery vehicle for a Chinese food restaurant, naturally I'm going to call it Panda Express. Well, that's right, Project Panda Express. And the reason why I'm calling it Panda Express, Chinese food, that's the panda part, and Express, it's an X delivery vehicle, and Press stands for pressure from a positive displacement supercharger. But before we can add boost, we have to find out if the motor even runs, and then I want to do a compression test to find out if it's going to stand up to the boost. Check it out. windy oh yeah it's uh it's dirty <laughs> it's dirty and moldy and ugly and you know you can kind of see it's gonna take a bath which it will do but right now we're gonna just see if we can uh get the thing started okay as you can see i've got some tools this thing definitely gonna need a battery the battery's dead on it got some tools Brought a battery charger. Also brought this compression tester because if we do get this thing started, which I think it will run, once we get it started, I actually want to do a cranking compression test on it. Just see how the cylinders are, make sure that they're all nice and even. So let's, uh, let's tear into it. So this should kind of give you an idea of why this might not be the best vehicle that I've ever purchased. It's rough say the least I really only bought it because I have I'll show you a photo of the little AMR supercharger that I have I've got an AMR supercharger that's the only reason I bought this is so I could put that supercharger on here and run it boosted well, we'll see what happens okay actually doesn't look too bad this thing I'm pretty sure is dead i might try with this battery charger over here i might try charging that thing up and see if not we can just use it as the core because i got the new battery I've got a this thing here i'm gonna put a cap and rotor on it i got some plugs for it just check and make sure that you know kind of everything's running and you can just drive this thing around Got some space over here. That's where I'm hoping to put the supercharger. <laughs> let's see how this happens, man. All right, let's tear into it. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is take this. I think that these are all basically just like, kind of, yeah. That's just kind of all finger tight there. Same thing with this one. I'll take that one off and then we can yank this bad boy out. He did uh, weld up a little tray for it, which is cool. I'm gonna set the new battery in there. What I'll do is I'll probably just like take a tie strap that I bought and just strap that in place. Let's put that in there and see if it starts up. All right, here's, here's our little battery, our little rep replacement battery. Set that in there. Set it away here. that thing hooked up and see if it cranks over get the 
pause them on there nice and tight. Make sure we got a good connection there. Get our negative on there. Okay, that's all in good shape there. Get that one tightened up and it's ready to crank it. Okay, we found one issue and I think it's with this. This is not making a good connection. That's probably, that wire's probably bad in there. You can see it's all green and stuff. Probably needs a new ground wire. So what I did was I got some jumper cables, hooked that up to the negative side, and then just basically grounded the jumper over here just so we got a good negative because we weren't getting any connection for the battery. I think that this side seems like it's okay. So it might need a new, might need a new ground wire. See that just goes down to the down to the lug down there. So either a new terminal, let me know in the comments what you guys think, a new terminal or a whole new cable. I mean that's that's a really cheap thing, but let's try now to crank it up and see what happens. Go inside here. So I see a light that comes on here. Got something happening on the dash. Got the clutch in. Oh, look at that. Dang. I want the blinkers is on. Probably, uh, I wonder if anything is working on the dash. I don't know if it's that empty of fuel or something I'll have to check. I'll have to check and see if that's working. I'll have to see if the temp gauge is working. See if the see if this thing is even even like plugged in. It's probably I don't know, probably is I guess. <laughs> we'll have to see. But it is running, which is good. That's it, that's a good sign. You can see right here, with the belt rubbing on the, uh, on the truck cover. So I don't know, I don't know why that would be happening. It seems like it's running, running quite a bit too. It's going on there, but I'm excited it's running, so now let's do a uh, cranking compression test. Okay, so you saw we had it running. What I'll do is I'll pull all three of the spark plugs and then we'll do a crank compression each cylinder and kind of see what's going on. There, we'll move the plug wires. We'll get in there with our, our socket here. We'll loosen all these babies up and I can spin them out with a the drill. Oh, there we go, that's good. Okay, spin them out with a the drill. There you go, plugs out. Take a look at them. You know, they're a little sooty, I guess, but not terrible. They're nothing damaged. I don't think there's any, uh, you know, they all have gap on them. It doesn't look like anything's broken. Looks like they were all firing, so let's get our, we'll get our, let's get our compression tester and we'll see what we got. Okay, got our compression tester in. Got to do it in number one first. This doesn't really matter, but screw that in. Seats on the O-ring. And then up our gauge right here. Okay, looks like we're at 150 for cylinder one. That was actually the one that I was worried about. Looks like it's okay. It's all good.
Try cylinder number two. Right at 150 for cylinder number two. So let's try number three. Hooked up. Nice and even, man. Everything's at right at 150. So what I'm going to do is I'll put new plugs in it. I put a cap and rotor on it, and uh, see if I can't figure out why that belt is rubbing on the front cover. Okay, I got three new plugs. Actually, it's probably running just fine with the plugs that were in it. These right here, but new ones in it's got all the even compression so you know it's the very least we can do and we'll change out the cap and rotor all our plugs tight wires in nice and in order there make it easy green it's all scratched up obviously it's been played with a bit Take this thing off it's not terrible but we've got new ones so we'll put new ones on i would have no problem just rubbing that with a file or sandpaper or whatever running it but we got new ones it was cheap i think i'm gonna put new plug wires into i don't like how they were connecting down to the plug um it's a little green inside there and also it's opened up so it actually doesn't want to clamp on the spark plug in. So, uh, you know, wires is cheap. We'll change this out and see how it runs. Okay, you got our new rotor on. And then install the cap. And then we'll change out the plug wires. One thing I noticed on this new one, if you take a look at the post inside the cap, those are dramatically different than our posts over here. And these are more the flat style. See if that works, or maybe they gave me the wrong ones. We'll check it out. Okay, got all our plugs in. Got our new cap and rotor. I still have the old wires on it. I'm gonna go down and get some more because I didn't buy them. I bought all the rest of this stuff. But let's just make sure that it starts. I'm a little worried about that cap and the different poles. Maybe it lines up just fine. Probably does. Maybe they just changed the design. But let's jump in. Or uh... <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Fires right up. It's an interesting throttle. I'm gonna go get new plug wires. I'm gonna get a new ground wire from over at AutoZone. And that should make it, and right now before I leave, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of the, the tie straps that I bought from Harbor Freight always a good place to get stuff like that i'm gonna strap that battery down and then i'll work on a more permanent you know hold down for that thing but right now um looks like she's a runner i gotta take some of these wheels have the tires put on them you can see you got some new tires what i do i think i'm gonna do is looks like some of those might be bent though um i was thinking about maybe just cleaning them off and painting them black you know Get that sinister look at the Darth Vader look going on in the Metro. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Okay, honestly, the new ratchet strap might be the nicest part of the whole. <laughs> might be the nicest part of the whole car. <laughs> Although the battery is new. So I'm going to go get something to replace this negative battery cable. And then spark plug wires. And then she should be a runner. And maybe in the next episode, we'll try to figure out what's going on right there. I don't know why that would be rubbing unless that's the wrong pulley or something or the spacing's incorrect on it. I might be able to space it. You guys let me know in the comments. I might be able to space that pulley. I'll put some washers back behind it, but it looks like it's pretty 
far back there. Is that thing supposed to miss that? Let me know in the comments, guys. Thanks. Okay, guys, as you saw from the video, we have good compression on all three cylinders. That means that, yes, we'll be able to install our AMR 500 supercharger on it. And the motor is probably definitely strong enough to withstand, you know, some boost from this thing. And we'll see what happens. I'll get to run the Chili Bomb intercooler with this thing. It will all be awesome. But before we can do that, I need to do a few other things. Obviously, this thing needs to be cleaned and sanitized and disinfected before we'd want to take it anywhere. I also need to make sure that things like the lights and the wipers and all these things work. Obviously, you want to check wheel bearings and brakes and all that stuff. It's definitely going to need a clutch. We'll simply upgrade this thing to the turbo sprint stuff. We'll put a new flywheel and clutch and assembly on it. And then it should work really, really good. I've got some new tires to put on the wheels and stuff. So this is going to be an ongoing project. But the goal of all of this is to run some boost from this AMR 500. Armature holder, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and boost will be coming.